G'day, Steve from OffTheGridInOz.com again, Steve and Kerry. We're, we were going to start a set of videos on building, just generally building off the grid. And these are for our website. I, I know they land on SpewTube and we stick them up all over the place. But the reason for these videos isn't to impart or enforce our views on people as to what's best, what's perfect. I, I, from my point of view, you have to understand that I, I have this core belief that generally experience in the people who have done anything, I don't care whether you're crocheting or building or what you do in life, experience tends to go by the wayside and these days with in regard to off the grid, the experience really needs to be imparted to the new groups of people coming along. Because things like alternative living and off the grid are getting bigger and bigger, the information required that the younger people especially, not so much the oldest, older guys, but the younger people, they, they need as much information as they can get. And so we make these videos, and that's the reason for them. It's got nothing to do with bloody ego. If I had an ego, I'd stick the freaking camera face and straight up my head and go, hello, here I am. You don't get much off me except the voice, the, the experience perhaps that I can impart. If you look at offthegridnoz.com, it's one of those websites with mostly text on it, so if you can't be bothered reading, if your idea of information is a pretty picture and a pretty graphic, well, probably we're pretty hopeless at that. So you need to read the content on our website, you need to watch these videos and take them in context with how they're meant to be or how they were put up and the reasons they were put up is more of the point. Now as far as building goes, and this is going to be the first in the building series, Building is one of those topics that, like nearly all the topics to do with off-grid, involve perspective, point of view, attitudes, uh, social background of people involved. There's all sorts of things that come into to building. We've been down a, a site I give my experience to start with, as I've mentioned a couple of times. I'm 40 years into I built the first home at 23, 40 years into this sort of stuff. Built four, four full projects myself, four full properties up myself. I've renovated on behalf of other people and got paid for it. Many, many projects. I've worked on everything from your average brick veneer to country and western timber style, unorthodox mud brick. I've renovated just about all. So I mean anything I say comes from a fairly experienced perspective but that does not mean that it holds with everybody's point of view. So get that locked and loaded before you start you know, sticking the pins in my dolls, all right? What I want to do is start just generally with building off-grid. It encompasses lots of variables that you see as examples all over the place. You've got people who build in orthodox manners with big checkbooks, and you've got people that build down to total budget style building that can be a tin shed, it could be a container. It can be anything, really, if it conforms to that particular person's view of what's okay or what's acceptable or what's nice. If it fulfills their needs, well, then guess what? Their, their frickin' build is fine. I hate seeing a lot of people who get up there and go, this is my point of view and I'm going to shove it down your nose whether you like it or not. And if you do anything different, you're a dickhead. Well, you know, I'm a dickhead, you're a dickhead, we're all dickheads in our own way, but we're only dickheads as far as perhaps somebody else's point of view. I'm sure not all of us sit at home and hang shit on ourselves for our own decisions, we just live with them. So as far as construction goes, I'm going to have to take this in, in steps, it's, a, it's such a big thing. And I, I will qualify this again, as far as I'm concerned, with one statement. I do know what the cost of a nail is. I do know what the cost of a pop rivet is. I do know what the cost of a sheet of iron is. I do know the cost of plaster, timber, cleats, sheet metal of any description, concrete. I know what it costs to put a piece of timber up and attach something to it. I have a really good understanding of cost. So anything I say, don't take it to heart. I might mention a tin shed and look at it from the point of view of just cost. Not whether it's a good idea, not whether it's comfortable, not whether it's my view of comfort or, the, or a good idea, but I may just mention a tin shed as far as just material cost go, goes in the long term. And that applies to things like shipping containers, 
lots of people use shipping containers and I might just spend three seconds on those alone just right right this second shipping containers right cost first argument you get thrown back at yourself if you dare question somebody with a shipping containers they're cheap and easy and they're they're relocatable okay we'll take cheap well cheap for starters is a relative statement they're cheap for the initial purchase you might get one given to you for free bloody honky dory that's that becomes a perspective that you will hold because you got your container for free but if you're the average joe and this is directed again at new people if you have to go out there and spend three thousand dollars on a shipping container fine all you're buying is a sheet metal skin all right anyone will tell you that a lot of these shipping containers especially if you load them up with orthodox building methodology built into on top of and around they have to be dealt with in a way that brings into the the cost factor orthodox building methodology orthodox building methodology means you might want to line the inside out yeah you might have to put some studs up some battens up some insulation all of the orthodox stuff without going through the whole list everyone's smart enough to know probably what makes a what makes a building tick but the cost involved of taking your three thousand dollar or two thousand dollar skin of a shipping container and then adding the things that you may do to that over the course of the next you know, six months, 12 months, two years, whatever time you take, the total cost at the end of the project causes, and this is a fact, guys, it causes a $3,000 40-foot by 20-foot skin to not be cheap. All right? That's just a fact. A 20-foot by 40-foot skin, sheet metal skin, for 3000 bucks on average and i know what they're worth i know you might grab one for a thousand if you're lucky it's not cheap not when you turn around and have to add everything into it so and i know people will say that they are movable transportable it can be moved from property to property well i know a few people with containers and i've got to tell you uh i don't know anyone that's ever moved one so the argument that they're mobile, transportable, and if they don't comply to council regulations, you can move it, does have some validity, but it's not real solid. Right? Most of them stay plonked where they get sat. They get mucked around with that much that they also become a little bit more difficult to move than the exercise was to drop them there in the first place. I hear, hear another argument with shipping containers that you don't need much skill. Well, if you're going to live in just the skin and throw a carpet on the floor, fine, no skill involved. If you're going to attach orthodox methodology to it, at some point, all those skills that you seem to think or these people seem to argue with me that wasn't required in the beginning, all of a sudden become a very, very big requirement. If you're going to line it out or you're going to put plaster in there or you're going to insulate it or you're going to put some plumbing in it or some electrical in it build some cabinets well the argument that there's no skill involved sort of goes sideways a bit I'm not saying it's totally removed but it goes sideways a bit the other argument as far as no skill required and actually we a lovely gentleman on one of the facebook pages put this post up a little while ago you can add a window by simply cutting it with an angle grinder cutting a hole in it well again if you're only using the skin as your total analogy of uh, to do with that argument fine angle grinder yep instant hole what do you do with that hole you then need the skill to build a window or buy a window and fit it or whatever if you've lined the inside out you have to not only cut the skin but you have to fit the lining to it it gets a little bit more complicated and a little bit more not simple and it really does take skill unless you're going to live in just that skin so anyway that, that's as much on shipping containers i actually like them i think people do marvelous things with them but uh, as a builder i'm here to tell you that i certainly would not argue to a new person that this is the way they should go um, personally i think a little bit more patience and perhaps a little bit of learning to get something a fraction more orthodox up may give that person a little bit more square footage and i know the argument is thrown out there that tiny houses are great 
they are great. I think they're actually spectacular. And again, what people do with them is great. But that argument that they're good value for bucks for the new person with no skill, hmm, not too sure about that. Not too sure about that at all. Seen too many examples of that going a bit sideways, so to speak. So that's shipping containers. Tin sheds. Now, as I said, this video is just a glossary. I'm going to do these in detail. And these are for our website. Uh, the tin shed has a lot of the elements of the shipping container attached to it. Yep, cheap to buy. First question. Buy a kit, throw it up, honky dory. But what you wind up with a tin shed is just a skin again. So you might only pay three grand for your, your kit shed. And believe me, I, me and Kerry looked at um, the American barn style kits. We were very close to running down that road. But on deeper analysis of what has to be done to those to turn them into what in my view is a habitable space and that means having at least some insulation a bit of soundproofing and you know just a few human comforts turning a tin shed from a tin shed into some one something that we thought we could cope with it becomes very expensive and it also entails all those skill sets so your tin shed falls into lots of the brackets lots of the categories that i would put containers into they're initially a cheap spend, no one will argue that. But in the long run, if you're starting from scratch and you have no skills whatsoever, uh, they're a shortcut that might save you, uh, as I said to Kerry a little while ago, they'll, they, they'll keep the rain off your head very quickly. Bang, they're up, two weeks, three weeks, whatever. And yeah, the rain's off your head. That's great, that's, uh, that's a, a very big positive to start with. But whether they're a good long-term idea, I'm not too sure of. I've said this a million times, planning and information, information gathering for the new people, new people looking into this sort of thing, is critical. Things like your shipping container purchase or your tin shed, in this case for a new person, will fulfil those first needs, the rain kept off your head. It will alleviate the need for vast amounts of skill initially and they will go up quickly so yeah all great but not so good now i've built you can see i'm just actually looking down the veranda now we we build with poles we build with orthodox stud and frame construction we've built in brick we've built in all manner we pretty much use all types of systems from more country style to more orthodox style. It just depends on cost of the particular project that we run into and how we assess it and what we want visually out of it as well as financially out of it. But we use all methodology, so I'm not a naysayer of any particular type of building construction method, but I'm not a total advocate of any one particular type either. Now, when I pan around here, this place that we built this time is built out of a material that's called EPS. They're called SIPs, Structurally Insulated Panels. Most people would know them because of the transportables that are built by it. This is a slightly different one. That door I'm showing you right now is double, double glazed. That window, double glazed. Those walls are 100 mil thick. They're four inches thick. Built out of cool room panels. So instead of the old transportable 50 mil wall, they're 100 mil thick. They fulfill or they fulfilled all the requirements of this build for us this time around this whole building is around about 11 and a half squares nearly 12 squares and what it has actually achieved for twenty thousand dollars is a completely livable habitable space that took very little effort very little time and considering normal building practices it was very cheap I'll just briefly, and I'm going to do a video on EPS, these insulated panels separately, but just briefly, these panels tw reflect to us $20,000, and that's with the doors and windows, all right? It sits on rails, and that's including the rails that it sits on, the channels that it sits on, there, and it's just sitting on blocks. So it conforms to the transportable type of building methodology that people will argue with you oh well i bought a transportable because i can move it around 
This is built in exactly the same way. Skill, well, this thing also doesn't entail much skill. Sheet metal is pretty easy to work with with a pair of tin snips. It's a bit like your, sh your shipping container or your tin shed thing. But this stuff comes finished, finished painted surfaces on the inside and outside. Now I'm going to walk inside the door again, just quickly, because I'm only going to make this a short one since it's only an intro to building. And this is what we've done. Now you've seen in here before on the other videos, this stuff, I'll go over to the wall, listen to this. It's solid as a rock, all right? It's steel. It's pre-painted. It's insulated, 100 mil thick. They make cool rooms and fridgy boxes out of this stuff, which isn't a glowing, you know. I don't run around the place saying, oh, actually I do. Yeah, there's Kerry over there. Say hi, Steve. G'day, Steve. <laughs> Kerry's over there at the computer in the glare. Hey, hello. Sitting in the sun. Sitting in the sun, yes. Yeah, this place um, is a fridgy box. It's built out of fridgy box material. But you wind up with a result that didn't take a great deal of effort compared with orthodox building methods. Has a lot of the components of your container style building or your shed style building, being sheet metal. Except this place didn't require painting on the inside. It didn't require cladding on the outside. It didn't require separate insulation. It didn't require nut mega loads of nails. The panels are all machine squared, so that basically standing a vertical wall up was as simple as standing up, putting a level on one edge, and there was your wall. Very quick, this place was built in, how long do we take, Kerry? About six weeks? Yeah, not even. Not even. Well, I call it six weeks because I had to put you know, a few extras in, like this little bay window that's here. Oh, I did a few extra bits and bobs to it, but yeah, six weeks, guys. And that's with very minimal skill. I had never built entirely an EPS home before. So my experience with poles and stud work and normal, normal building methods really didn't apply to this to any great degree. So yeah, this is what we've done and I'm gonna go through it a bit, a bit deeper in another video. But I just wanted to make this one this morning because of the couple of comments made about containers and different methodologies and the reasons for it. You can't get around the fact that everything becomes relative. You can't get around the fact that everything becomes a cost exercise and the cost exercise itself becomes relative. Your budget may be in one lump, your budget may be as you go. Lots of reasons that cause different thinking to cause different decisions to be made and they are all okay. And you don't need to shove them back in the face. I'm fully aware of all the circumstances around whatever it might take or what, what it might cause for you to make a decision in one direction or another. But I do believe emphatically that the cheap alternative, if you're building from scratch, not if you've bought a property with a container on it that's already done, honky-dory, fine, that's good. <laughs> hey, no one's going to argue that. But if you're a newbie and you're looking at a building methodology, a building method, sorry, you might want to think really hard about a tin shed. You might want to think pretty hard about a container. They are just a sheet metal skin. They are only 3000 bucks, but that, that cost will grow. And then perhaps look at something like, in our ex in my example here, these structurally insulated panels. You can clad the outside of them with stuff to make them pretty. You can do all sorts of stuff if you're really hell bent. But as far as a methodology to use that the average person can employ with very little training, this stuff is fantastic. And it's cost effective to buggery. Your shipping container at 40 foot by 20, 40 foot by eight feet at $3,000. Well, what you're staring at here is 20 grand worth. I kid you not, under $20,000 worth. 12 squares on steel, pre-painted, double glazed windows, 20 grand. You can send me you know, any amount of messages you want and tell me that's bullshit. Oh, I'm going to tell you it's not bullshit. And with 20 grand, we wound up getting the veranda outside. Whoop, trip over the, the mat there. Hey, bye, Steve. See ya. <laughs> it's a nice morning here. That's why I'm wandering around. But yeah, outside, you can see that I built this veranda. It's, you know, 10 and a half metres by 5 metres. It's not small. Fully insulated, 100 mil EPS roof and that was included in the 20,000 bucks over there you'll see even had materials left over 
I've got that leftover pile there which is scraps but I've got quite a few panels left over I'm going to make a bit of a cool room we've got a good pantry inside but I want to make another cool room but yeah this stuff is amazing if you need to know uh, where to buy it it's available on eBay yes it's imported yeah our little Chinese mates run this stuff out by the mile you do have to wait for some of it to be delivered if you want special sizes because it's all ordered from overseas if it's special they keep standard stock sheets so you can buy 2.4s and you can buy 3s and 6s yeah, in full range of sizes but yeah it's super cheap super easy to build with super quick and it doesn't wind up looking like a shipping container and i'm not hanging it on shipping containers i'm talking about the container you buy when you initially get it dropped on site you have just a beat up steel box right let's be be honest here you may turn it into a palace and i've seen plenty of them turn into absolute palaces but the cost of that palace at the end of the day has no reflection no bearing on the initial spend all right so think about that i'm going to leave this one at that for the second and my second video on building i will just pick on one methodology and go into a little bit a little bit deeper uh, someone actually said mentioned insulation the other day i can't even remember where it was now uh, insulation isn't cheap insulation in an orthodox stud brick stud built building by the time you buy sizal which is only a sarking material it's not sarking is just a moisture barrier it's not insulation by the time you put insulation in a wall that has to be built out of timber and then line it and clad it off per square meter an orthodox building with insulation and because you have to put the best insulation you can find and that'll be either synthetic or rock wool or fiberglass if you're unfortunate to get hold of some fiberglass cheap i don't like that because it's really yucky shit to work with but yeah insulation you just have to put the the, the best style the best r-rated insulation you can in the wall with the sarking with the with the insulation or what some people think is insulation they actually call it insulation but it's not it's just a moisture barrier that silver paper stuff or the blue paper has nothing to do with insulation at all it's just to stop the movement of moisture from one side of the wall to the other but yeah this stuff is already insulated so anyway i hope a little bit of information is helpful to new people coming along i don't like seeing people think that a three thousand spend on you know, a, a kit tin shed is necessarily a wise move given circumstances it might be the only thing that those people can do especially if you're building as you go but the end result may or may not be um, satisfactory or what you had in your dream in your mind and sure as hell it won't be as cheap as what you thought i know a lot of people who have done tin shed conversions and i'm talking a lot not just one or two i know a lot all of them have blown a fair chunk of money they have blown way more than this sort of caper this is my first build in sips structural insulated panels my first entire build done a few additions with it and stuff like that but you can't beat it you just can't beat it i still love my pole construction and that's expensive these damn things are expensive yeah. and one thing uh, you've got to you've got to remember too a lot of people will come back and argue with i'm not talking about me but when people get in discussions with new new people that are going off grid i hear this all too often oh we got our materials from the side of the road or we got it second hand and that's all fine but second hand materials aren't readily available to everybody not everyone has the skills to deal with second hand materials so a lot of the time yeah you will get a little bit of second hand we've got some lovely second hand windows so i recycled out of a job we use anything good that comes along i mean we'll pick it up but primarily there's too much material involved here in all the building that's gone on this on this new property to have stuck with second hand it would have taken me forever um, we really we our, part of our agenda part of our plan was to do this relatively quickly so that we can enjoy it i didn't want to spend five years doing this project so that after five years we can sit back we're just in the, into our seventh month now and we've been sitting here soaking this stuff up and enjoying it for probably the last six weeks a month and a half so five months or so to get the whole lot up and that's sheds two buildings two functional buildings the outdoor kitchen got the grow, grow areas going 
and the inside's pretty pretty comfortable that's a nice reflection but yeah um, time frames also are important to some people and not important to others and that's okay if you're prepared to spend you know five years putting your project together because of budgetary constraints that's the way it is that's fine people like me or at least I would never say anything against people that do that I know people that have done it but if you're looking for quick functional modern clean fuss free no skill required virtually at least minimal skill uh, structural insulated panels as we've used uh, really really high on the list guys and my opinion only here is they are far far up the ladder as far as the choice goes than any orthodox building method or any container building method or any tin shed conversion and that's from a cost analysis only not personal choice and the personal choice is your choice nothing to do with me just tell me to piss off if i ever tell you that you know what i've done here is what i've done here and i'm just telling you from a cost analysis and from a personal building analysis from a person that's built lots of different things that this stuff um, is totally amazing and far more efficient and less costly than any of those methods so now steve from off the grid i'm going to go have another cup of coffee stuff this it's too bloody too nice a morning to be wasting on this just been playing with my distilled water equipment yeah <laughs> yes don't we drink a lot of distilled water let's leave us alone dropping off the grid .com, but like i said it's a website that's mostly full of text we've got the youtube videos up there just as duplication pretty much or they're they're made basically to go on there from youtube we scatter them around the place like i said so you'll see them on facebook pages mine and kerry's and other things but yeah the the videos aren't there to wave our flag i'm not there to brag about my deck you know <laughs> And my deck's my deck, everyone's got, you know, if you want to build a deck, go build a freaking deck, you know. It's nothing to do with that sort of thing. It's purely to impart information to new people coming along, inspire them and instill some confidence into them that there are methods out there that might be, in my opinion, a little bit easier for them to tackle, a little bit financially, you know, easier to do, less taxing on them. And speed, well... If you're 26, fine, you've got 10 years to build your project up, that's all good. But if you're an old fart like me, shit, I wanted this to happen really quick so that I can kick back. I get a lot of enjoyment out of building. I get a lot of enjoyment out of creating anything. It doesn't matter if it's a building or a garden or, or whatever. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to sit back and soak up the results, the efforts of your hard graft. You need to be able to sit back and enjoy it as well, not just suffer you know, eternally over it. And that's why the EPS, the structural insulated panels, is a good way to speed that sort of thing up. Then you can dress it up later, but you will have a comfortable insulated building very quickly, very cheap. All right, drop into the website. If you feel that way inclined to have a read, remember if you don't read, don't bother going there. I'm joking, you can go there anyway. But yeah, subscribe down below if you want. Give us a like if you want. Yeah, usual drill. I'm not going to force anyone to do anything. I'm not going to beg for donations. We don't make any money. This is purely, I'd say, out of the goodness of my heart. But if you ask Kerry, I haven't got a heart, apparently. I'm joking. She knows I'm a good man deep down. You might have to get a backhoe to find it, but I'm a deep man deep down. <laughs> Beautiful morning. You'll probably just waffle now, but I won't finished our hotel. I mentioned the shade cloth only about a thousand times in a lot of the videos. We finished all that now. We've got to go around the back of the shed last section. Back of the kitchen I should say. And we're done with that and we can start putting the plants in. That'll be a bloody a boomer. So anyway, again, Steve from off the grid .com. Subscribe, like, all of that and we'll catch you on the next one. Next video will be on a detailed part of this type of construction. This type of construction I've chosen to go this time with and that's the structural insulated panels. So cheers from me and Sterry, me and Sterry, it is early in the morning. Cheers from me and Kerry and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.